This property is about 900 hectares, so in this area it's not a large property, but uh, is, it is a significant property for this project. This is one of the largest sites we've come across in, in, in this area. This project basically is right beside the Fitzroy River here, um, and it links, and what you've got just over on the other side here, we have Louisa Creek, and during flood events, the Fitzroy River has been punching through and eroding out this area and then flowing out Louisa Creek, creating an island basically where I'm standing. So you've got all the sediment coming off here, but by creating a new path, Louisa Creek changes and all of a sudden you've got more sediment coming out of there as well. The first state of it, stage of it is planning, so we need to do an engineered design. We need to work out uh, the hydrology, what's, what's happening here. We do the modelling, and then we do a detailed design. So throughout this whole process, we're working very closely with the technical working group, and their role is to provide advice and look at the plans and provide endorsement. It appears that logging might be responsible for why this particular point became a weak point in the bank, which has allowed those large floods to um, cause that damage in the first place and, and tear out a large amount of material. So if we don't intervene, um, we face the prospect of losing probably five times more than what's already gone throughout the creek system, the smaller creek system that adjoins the Fitzroy, um, just through the different hydraulics that it will undergo once that's fully removed. So there's some pretty significant impacts that we're looking at preventing. I, I could see there was a major problem there from years, years gone by that there was a major erosion at the, at the head of the creek, or I should say at the where the, where the creek enters the Fitzroy and so I've just suggested to a few people that that needs to be dealt with and, and I think um, because it's so close to our, our property as well it's become a big issue and I think um, Peter's is going to do a fantastic job working towards repairing that. Um, it's going to mean that uh, we'll be putting more fencing ourselves to manage the water coming into that, that degraded area um, and we'll just change practices a bit more on that, that area as well. It'll be a, a cut and fill job. We will bring in some, some topsoil. Uh, we'll also work closely with Conservation Volunteers Australia who'll come in and do seeding, mulching and replanting. We'll actually create what we call almost a, a hydraulic buffer along the river. So we'll plant heavily along the river and we'll plant very densely in this place. So at the moment, uh, Conservation Volunteers have propagated about 8,000 plants for us. Rivers will evolve where they rapidly change their um, path but it's normally not at an angle that we're seeing here. So I think it was the, um, the landholder suspects that there might have been a build-up of material in the Fitzroy over time that created like an artificial island, which helped to deflect flow through this weak point. A lot of the material there will be fine sediment, which will stay suspended in solution as it travels through the Fitzroy and eventually end up out in the Great Barrier Reef Lagoon. You'll collect sediment as the flood event rises and falls and you'll know at what time in the event um, each sediment sample was collected and you'll need to create a rating curve through hydraulic modelling to determine at what height what was the flow rate and then we just use the volume collected and multiply that by the flow rate to get the total cubic metres or tonnes in that event across each of the samples that they collect. Fiona Loft is one of the project officers on the team. Um, she's got a big role in doing the water quality monitoring. So as part of the project, we're actually monitoring upstream and downstream. So we're basically what we're doing a back eye before after control impact. All right, so before we even do any work, we're gonna start monitoring the sediment upstream and downstream. Then we'll come back after the work and we'll continue to monitor to see what changes we've made. So the science will prove that what we've done has made a difference to the system. They're designed for flood events, so when water comes down the river, they'll either, depending on the level, fill up the first one there, or if it's a very high level, fill up both of them. Um, they'll collect the sample, because once the sample goes in, it can't come back out. And then when there's access, I can come back and collect the sample. This whole area goes underwater. So where, where we're, we're filming now, it's about four, four to five foot of water here, um, which is one, one and a half metres. And that to me is, um, we've got to have structures in place to handle that depth of water, but also to be able to retain as much of that before it goes 
down the creek or out to sea. So we'll be monitoring this site for four years. So we'll come down in every big rain event when we know that there's water in here after it and we'll take samples. For every, for every um, uh, one tonne of sediment that, that is going onto the reef, we're losing more than that from our property. So we, we just have to make sure that, that we limit the erosion of our entire business so that we're not losing any soil at all. We don't want to lose topsoil. Um, we don't want to give it to a neighbour and we certainly don't want to put it on the reef.